So today I'm going to do an experiment involving electrolytic capacitors and a centrifuge. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So in this experiment, I'm going to see what happens when I centrifuge an electrolytic capacitor. Now I'm thinking that something will happen because electrolytic capacitors have electrolyte inside that helps them work. And because the centrifuge will apply such a large force, I'm thinking that it may cause the electrolyte to leak out or maybe pull at the bottom, or something causing the capacitor not to work as well. I'm going to test each capacitor's specifications using this small tester before. Alright, so it looks like this capacitor is 403 microfarads, with an internal resistance of 0.42 ohms, and a voltage loss of 2.1%. We'll see if that changes. This is the capacitor with shorter leads. This capacitor with longer leads, 817 microfarads, with an internal resistance of 0.46 ohms and a voltage loss of 3.7. We shall see if this changes. I will input these capacitors into respective test tubes for the centrifuge. I am placing the capacitors here facing opposite directions, just to see if that has any effect. Now inserting the capacitors into the centrifuge, each respective tube is the same weight, which will be good. You can't have an uneven weight distribution inside a centrifuge, otherwise you might face some problems with it shaking and potentially catastrophic failure. So with that, I will attach the cap and we'll start it up. 14,000 RPM for four minutes. Looks like it's done. That thing is going so fast. Oh, that's interesting. You can see there's like a little ring around the bottom where it looks like the force of the centrifuge pressed them in. I don't see any electrolyte on the bottom. Let's pop these out and give them a test. This is for the capacitor with shorter legs. This is the capacitor with longer legs. It looks like not much has really changed here. So these are the results. This is before and after for each capacitor. See that before it was 403 microfarads, afterwards it was 407.9. And for the other capacitor, 817.6, and then 828 microfarads. So, you can see that there was a change here, but I didn't use the most scientific methods here. I only tested it once before and once after, and these readings do deviate a little bit on the meter. So, I'm going to try it again but instead take 10 readings before to get an average of the before value, then 10 readings after to get an average of the after value. So we can see if there really is an increase in capacitance, because so far that's what it's looking like, but I don't believe it. So let's try that. I'm gonna be using this capacitor, but this is the one we're gonna actually be running valid tests on. This one looks like it's about to leak already, so that might be kind of fun. Maybe this one will actually leak out electrolyte. Now we're really doing some science here. I just got eight readings of this capacitor and figured out that its average is exactly 222 microfarads. Just finished. Let's check it out. So this one that was already kind of leaking, it looks like there might be a drop in there. Maybe that's just a deformation in the plastic. And here is the one that we actually want to measure. So these are the results that I got and they're rather interesting. So we see here that the average capacitance of this capacitor before centrifuging was 222.0 microfarads, and it varied by 1.4 microfarads at maximum. And the final value of the capacitor was 224.2 microfarads, and it varied by 1.2 microfarads at maximum. So it looks like there was a noticeable difference here. But this is not enough. I want to do more to verify that in fact, centrifuging a capacitor does increase its capacitance. And so, here's what I'm going to do next. I have these four capacitors. These three are brand new. This one is used. I have values of 220 microfarads, 220 microfarads, 10 microfarads, and 470 microfarads. I'm first going to take measurements from each of these capacitors on this Google spreadsheet. I'll take 12 measurements before centrifuging the capacitor, 12 measurements after centrifuging it, and 12 measurements 10 minutes after to see if it might return to normal after a little bit of time sitting.
All right, so the results are in, but before we take a look at those, this is kind of interesting. This is a normal capacitor, brand new. You can see that it sits on the table flat. This is one that has been centrifuged. It used to be brand new. Look how much it bulged. Well, here it is. The data you've all been waiting for. The results from all of my capacitor tests. So here I have the results from my capacitor 1, which is 220 microfarads. My results from the capacitor 2, which is 220 microfarads. Results from capacitor 3, 4, and C5. This capacitor is the one I did tests on the other day. This is the results you saw on my iPad just entered into the spreadsheet, so it's easier to see. Uh, C1 and C2, as well as C4, were all three brand new capacitors. C3 was a slightly used one, and I think C5 was also slightly used. So, going back, I have my measurements before the centrifuge, 12 of them, uh, measurements after the centrifuge, and measurements 10 minutes after the centrifuge. Here I have the average value of each column. As for this p-value number, I took a double-tailed paired t-test of this column with respect to this column. That's what this number is. I also took a t-test of this column with respect to this column to gain this number. And basically what the p-value is, is it's the percent chance that the results I saw were due to random chance. So let's take a look at the first capacitor. We see here that before the centrifuge, the average value was around 221 microfarads. After the centrifuge, it dropped, actually, which wasn't expected, and 220 microfarads. And then it went back up again to 221 microfarads 10 minutes after the centrifuge ran. This one's interesting. It kind of did the opposite. It went up and then back to normal. So it started at 229 microfarads, went up to 230 microfarads, went down again to 229 microfarads. The statistical difference here, the p-value, is actually very small at 0.0023%. So that means that there's a very good chance that the experiment caused this difference here, and also a pretty good chance that this value is statistically different from the original value, which means that although it increased here, it didn't decrease all the way. Going on to our third capacitor, we see that it started out at 456 microfarads, increased by a lot to 459.24 microfarads average, and then decreased a whole lot to 452.64 microfarads, which is strange. Here, for the 10 microfarad capacitor, started at 10.09 microfarads, ended at around 10.09. So you see here the p-value is pretty big at 35% chance that this was due to random chance. So not very statistically significant. And as we can see from here, there wasn't a big change anyway. So I didn't even bother to take uh, measurements 10 minutes after. This one I didn't take measurements 10 minutes after because I didn't plan on doing that. This is kind of my old data. But you can see here that the p-value is 0 0.01. So it means that these two are pretty statistically significant in their difference from each other. So those are my results. You can do with them what you may. As far as my conclusion goes, I'm not quite sure yet. There was definitely a change in the value of the capacitor after each run of the centrifuge, at least for the larger capacitors. For the 10 microfarad small capacitor, there wasn't really much of a change. An electrolytic capacitor is filled using a coil of aluminum strips with a spacer in between and then an electrolyte. That electrolyte is kind of soaked into the spacer just inside the capacitor. And, you know, when it's in that centrifuge, there's a large amount of force pushing down on it. And there's also the force of the little vial that I have it in also pushing back. So that could have compressed one end of the capacitor, forcing the plates closer together and therefore increasing the capacitance. And that can also explain why it reverted to normal, because after there was no more force applied, it kind of sprung back to normal slowly after it was removed. So in the comments, let me know how you would interpret my results. My conclusion as of now is that, yes, centrifuging a capacitor does change its capacitance for a bigger capacitor. That change is not very significant, considering the margin of error 
that these capacitors have, and also considering the margin of error I have when using my capacitor tester. But it definitely is a difference. I and mean, I'd have to do more tests and maybe learn a little bit more about statistics to further my experimentation. But for now, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time.